Carcassonne is on Nintendo Switch. From starting off as a board game from the early 2000s to a digital version accessible on the Nintendo eShop, does Carcassonne stand the test of time or does the tile-based kingdom builder crumble in the present? Hey everyone, it's Abdallah here with a video review for Carcassonne on Nintendo Switch. During this review, I'll be teaching you about how to play the game as well as detailing what I enjoyed about the game and areas of opportunity so that you guys can make an informed decision of whether or not you want to purchase the game and play on your own. If you played the physical board game, you can jump straight in and enjoy the game as is. For those of you guys who have never played Carcassonne before, let's start this review off with a quick tutorial and luckily for us, the game has a very basic tutorial that shows you some concepts to learn as a beginner. Carcassonne is a tabletop board game in which you build medieval landscape tiles from a random deck, one at a time, in order to build cities, fields, and roads as the game progresses. The deck starts with one tile face up and a pile of face down tiles that players alternatively draw from, so there's a little bit of luck within the game. It's up to you to strategize how you want to build out areas of land on your turn and strategize how you want to spend your meeple, which are the little man-shaped tokens in which you start out with six along the way to score points. In this short tutorial, you're given a small taste of what the game is about, but luckily you can take a look at the official rules at any given time via the menu. In order for you to be more aware of your strategies, it helps to learn a lot more about the scoring at the end of the game than what the short tutorial shows you, such as, Learning that cities are worth two points per tile and an additional two points per coat of arms on them. Roads are worth one point per tile. Monasteries are worth one point plus one point per adjacent tile. Meeple in unfinished cities are worth half the points. Meeple in each field is worth three points per adjacent completed city. When you're playing through the game, it's imperative that you manage your meeple and build around them once you lay them down, as they don't become readily available to help you score unless you complete said feature, minus the fields of course, as those meeple are permanently set until the end of the game. In Carcassonne on Nintendo Switch, you have access to two expansions from the start, the Abbot and the River expansion. You can play the base game or any combination of these together. Let's show off a little gameplay of the Abbot expansion for you. The main allure about adding the Abbott expansion is the fact that you get a new pawn to play with aside from your normal meeple used for scoring. The Abbott can be placed on monasteries or garden tiles instead of the regular meeple, and Abbots are the only ones who can be placed on the new garden tiles. Garden tiles are just like monasteries where if it's adjacent to 8 tiles it's worth 9 points. The last special ability for the abbot is that if you opt to not place a meeple on a tile, you can recover your abbot wherever he is and claim the points on the monastery or garden, just like in final scoring. Next up is the river expansion. There is really not too much different with this one, other than the fact that your tile deck will have some random river tiles that players will take turns putting down at the beginning of the game. Players are also able to place meeple on certain river tiles to give a head start on scoring as well. After the river is complete, players play the game as normal. It seems that the river expansion simply allows for varied opening plays that you wouldn't normally have in the base game. The last expansion for Carcassonne is Inns and Cathedrals. The expansion is considered DLC and must be purchased additionally from the Nintendo eShop. What's new about this expansion is the fact that all players start with one large meeple that's twice as strong as regular meeple and scores twice as much. Players can use it like any other normal meeple. There are also road tiles that contain an inn where you get double points if you complete the road with it. In addition to the inn, there are two special city tiles with a cathedral on it. If you complete a city with a cathedral on it, cities score three points per tile and coat of arms instead of two. Last note on these two new tiles is if they're left unfinished during final scoring, they don't net you any points. After playing Carcassonne in real life a few times with some friends, with actual tiles spread across our dining room table, I can totally say that the Nintendo Switch version really stays true to the game. I really enjoy the fact that the game scores everything for you at the end, and we don't have to rely on physically counting and potentially miscounting scores afterwards, like with the physical game. The graphics on the Nintendo Switch version are great, and I really enjoyed the fact that as soon as you pull a tile, you can easily see which spots you can place it near. Uh, without having to second guess yourself. Turning on the field guides within the Nintendo Switch version also makes it a lot easier to see which fields you own in order to score them properly at the end of the game. The game is ideally played on a big screen TV in a living room while giving Joy-Con controllers to your friends in a couch co-op environment. 
I definitely would not recommend playing this in handheld mode with more than two people. If you're looking for a more solo challenge experience, try your luck against a CPU that have many varying difficulties. When it comes to areas of opportunity for Carcassonne on Nintendo Switch, I can't help but say that there are quite a few things that I would have liked to have seen done for the game. For starters, there's absolutely no online play whatsoever. With the brand new Nintendo online service that people are paying yearly for, and the fact that we're in the year 2019, online play should totally be the standard for games going forward. I would have loved to see some sort of spectator mode where I can sit back and watch some matches, or some sort of tournament mode with online matchmaking. One of the most intimidating things about playing brand new board games are reading over the rules. When I booted up the game for the first time and tried out the in-game tutorial, it gave me some basic ideas of what to do, but I still had tons of questions. One might argue that you should just read the rules, but then why even put a tutorial mode in the game if it's not going to teach you about how scoring works or providing tips and tricks to help you win against your opponents? You're spoon-fed a few random tips when loading cutscenes are happening, but there's no way to access all of those in one place. Some of the smaller things I would have liked to have seen changed up would be the slow cursor speed. There are times where your 70 plus tiles expand very far across the in-game table, and your cursor moves at a snail's pace when trying to reach the opposite side. An easy fix for that would be to map clicking in the thumbstick to speed up the cursor as an option, as even on a Joy-Con controller not all buttons are mapped out with functions, as the SL and SR buttons don't have any mapped functions at all to them. In order to confirm your turn, you also have to long press the A button, which is the same button that you use to place a meeple. There have been times where my cursor was slightly off uh, where it was supposed to be uh, in order to place a meeple down, and I accidentally long pressed my turnover and lost the chance to score points on a monastery. That would have potentially won me the game. A quick fix would be to map holding in the SL and SR buttons to end your turn. While the music in the game is very fitting for a medieval period, I feel the same looping track got pretty repetitive. I would have totally liked to have listened to a few more alternative ambience tracks. Another concept I would have liked to have seen would be some sort of customization within the game. You can't even change your name from Player 1. Why doesn't it at least grab the Nintendo Switch account name and place it on there, or allow you to type your name in? I would have liked to have seen a fully fleshed out achievement system that keeps track of your wins, losses, and specific challenges that you may have done, such as scoring a city spanning over 5 tiles, or building a road that's over 10 tiles long, in order to gain some sort of in-game currency used to purchase maybe different backgrounds, avatar icons, or even more music tracks. With the game priced at $20 at the time of recording, plus the $6.99 DLC expansion, you're paying almost $30 for the bare-bones port of a board game on Nintendo Switch. I get that the developers are trying to match the real price of the physical game, but I feel that the price point is a little too much for what you're getting. Overall, here are the things that I enjoyed. I love the auto-scoring. Placement guides were great. The field guides made it so much easier to take a look at all that. And of course, the overall ease of use within the game. So much fun. Areas of opportunity, slow cursor speeds, misuse of the buttons, absolutely no online play, only one looping music track, tutorials a bit too basic for beginners, there's no customization at all, and the price point can be arguably a little bit too much. Overall, Carcassonne on Nintendo Switch is a true port of the board game that many of you have come to love over the years. I enjoyed my time with it and often find myself connecting my Nintendo Switch to the Family Room TV to play a few rounds when friends are over. There are still many areas of opportunity in order to make the game even better, but unfortunately I feel that the developers wanted to test the waters before going all out. By developing this board game on Nintendo Switch, it opens the doors to many other board games to be ported over. Being a board game fan myself, I can't wait to see what others will be ported over. Pandemic, here I come baby. Don't you dare let me down when that gets released on Nintendo Switch. Well, there you have it, ladies and gents. My review of Carcassonne on Nintendo Switch. What did you think? Are you intrigued by the gameplay? Are you planning on picking it up and giving it a shot? If you're a fan of the physical version of Carcassonne, how do you feel about going digital on Nintendo Switch? I'd love to hear from all of you guys in the comment section below, so type out your own review of this game, and let's discuss it. If you enjoyed this video review of Carcassonne, be sure to smash that like button, and check out the video reviews playlist to be updated on all the latest Nintendo titles. Thanks so much for watching. I'll be looking Looking forward to seeing you on the next review.